In today's video I'm gonna show you how I created this Microsoft logo animation and I'm gonna show you a few tricks and techniques that you can apply to your work. Stay till the end. Okay, so we created a new composition, it's a 4K composition, so it's simple 38402160 resolution and with frame rate about 30 frames per second and duration 16 seconds for now. And this is my logo, you can see that already it's prepared for the animation part. How to prepare the logo, you can watch my previous tutorial where I animate Nike logo. Okay, so what we have here, we have letters separated and also those four colors, those four squares. So I'm gonna start with simply attaching those four layers to a new null object. You can create a new a new null object here or I just use a motion to script and just click here at null. And now I'm gonna hide those letters. We don't need them for now. And I'm gonna make sure that this those four squares are at the center. So I'm gonna go to position. I just press P on the keyboard and I put a one keyframe here and then I just go to align tab and press here to make sure that this null object is at the center. Okay, so let's move the first keyframe somewhere around here so we can work here with this new position. And what I would like to do is to introduce the squares from different sides. So I'm gonna select those layers, press P and add a keyframe here. And let's just do something like this. Maybe this yellow will go from the bottom, this blue from the left, this green from the right and this red from the top. And let's see what we have right now. Okay, and let's add to those squares an expression, an elastic expression. So I'm gonna just select those keyframes and press here. And let's see what we have. I'm gonna play with those keyframes a bit. Okay, this is a bit too strong, so I'm gonna go to elastic control and change the amplitude to 5. And let's see on this one layer. Okay, this is much better. So let's do this to all of those layers. Okay, maybe the blue one is also too strong and the green too. And I would like to add an echo effect to every square. And let's change the echo operator to maximum. And let's maybe go with number of echoes to about eight and time. And let's copy this and put this at the rest of the squares. I would like to also play with a scale. So I'm gonna just put a keyframe here and here go and just maybe go with uh, 15. Let's see how this looks. Okay, and maybe here we can also add an elastic expression. And maybe we could here add a bit of rotation. Let's see, this is gonna work. So maybe here we could rotate this a bit. And let's easy ease those keyframes. Okay, we can see that we need to fix echo effect a bit. So let's change the echo time maybe to 0.001. Okay, this is better. I'm gonna animate the echo time to have a bit stronger effect at the beginning. This looks nice. And here we could play with a position to move back those four squares to original position. And let's duplicate the, the value from those two keyframes. I use Easy Copy plugin for this. And let's paste here. And let's play with those keyframes. Okay, I'm gonna stick with this. And now let's maybe hide those squares and turn on those letters. And let's go to each one and add a mask to later play with a stroke effect. So I'm gonna speed up this process a bit. And then I just add a stroke effect. I increase the brush size, the brush hardness. I adjust the mask a bit and we change the paint style to reveal original image. And then we add a keyframe at the end value and we go to zero at the beginning. We add a keyframe with 0% at the beginning and 100% at the end. And then we select those two keyframes and just press F9. And let's keep this as it is for now and copy this stroke effect and paste it to the rest of those layers. And now let's fix a few places. Here we can see that this doesn't look nice. So let's just play with a mask. And I just try to find those places that doesn't look okay and to fix them. And 
and this small small dot is gonna appear at the end so let's go to position and scale add here the final keyframe put this at the top at a scale value of zero percent and we should have something like this select those keyframe press f9 to easy ease those and now we're gonna add a position to those letters so i'm gonna press p one keyframe here a second here and at the center we're gonna move those letters a bit to the top just a tiny bit something like this easy is those keyframes okay maybe this this is gonna do a job i'm gonna reduce the speed of the stroke a bit just trust your eyes and see what works best for your art okay and now let's sequence those layers and see what we have okay we can work with this and let's duplicate those layers, change the label, maybe to brown. And now let's go to those layers which are behind. And let's press U on the keyboard. And with a shift, just press P to deselect a position. And let's select the last value of the stroke. And just go a bit to the left with it. And change the color to red for now. This is gonna add a cool effect. This that we can reveal a bit faster. I can see that I duplicated that also. We don't need this. And now what I would like to do, I would like to make those letters which are behind in a similar colors that are our four squares. So let's go to the first one and let's go with this color. Let's go to the second one and let's go with a green, blue, yellow. And let's do this for the rest. Let's move those layers a bit to the right. And we can turn these layers to a new null object and we could reveal those layers here, but we don't want to collide with each other. And I think I'm gonna add a mask beneath those four squares. Just a simple shape. Let's fix it a bit. And now let's track mate those letters to this uh, shape and let's click here and right now we can get this effect that those letters are starting to appear beneath our main mark and we need to also parent this mask to this null object we can add a bit of scaling here and there and at the end we can go with our layer something like this maybe As the box goes, our letters disappear. We can also add a bit of rotation to this box. Okay, and let's render this and let's see the final result. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something from it. Please give a like, comment and subscribe to see more of this kind of videos. If you want to be up to date with everything what I do, you can follow me up on Instagram. The link is down in the description. And what can I say more? Have fun, have an amazing day and to the next time. Bye.